some early humans left the African continent over 40,000 years ago. And this was just before the Great Ice Age, which covered Northern Europe. So these early humans who left the African continent migrated to Northern Europe and they interbred with the Neanderthals that were living in Europe. The evidence says that the early, um, these early humans were in the Scandinavian stroke um, Northern Europe region, okay? And they what were later referred to as the Germanic people, okay? When I say this, think of the Vikings, okay? This group, the Scandinavian stroke Germanic group, is distinct from the Celtic people of Europe. In 2010, German scientists produced a paper which said the DNA of this group contains 2-5% to Neanderthal DNA. These scientists have also discovered that 20% of Neanderthal DNA can be found in this group of Europeans today although no one person has 20% of the Neanderthal DNA that is spread across different Northern European populations. No African has any Neanderthal DNA within their genome. Okay, now these Scandinavian um, Germanic people have over the years been called um, barbarians, for example by the ancient Greeks, Plato refer to them as barbarians, okay? The um, Romans under the Roman Empire also refer to them as barbarians. This group have had other names over the centuries, like Goth and Vandal, okay? Now, Goth actually means barbar barbarian as well. So, let me give you the details, okay? The early um, humans who migrated from the African continent went to Northern Europe just before the start of the Great Ice Age. Okay, and that Ice Age lasted for um, over 10,000 years. Okay, so scientists found that Neanderthals and modern humans coexisted for tens of thousands of years um, and they often interbred. And that the genomes of modern Northern Europeans contain about 2-5% to 5 Neanderthal DNA. There was a team in Leipzig in Germany who sequenced Neanderthal DNA and they published a draft Neanderthal genome and compared the Neanderthal DNA to five living humans and they found similarities between the DNA of Neanderthals and present-day Europeans. DNA which is not present in Africans. Geneticists have identified instances of gene flow between Neanderthals and early humans. Interbreeding may also have introduced genes which led to lighter skin colour in Northern Europeans, um, which could have been beneficial for vitamin D production in these northern latitudes with weak sunlight. Okay, It says some Neanderthal genes are linked to an increased risk of diabetes, Crohn's disease, cirrhosis of the liver, ringworm, among other diseases. There was an article in the Guardian newspaper in 2016 and it says um, diseases and infections um, passed on by these early humans may have helped wipe out the Neanderthals who previously dominated um, the continent. Yeah? It says the unfortunate Neanderthals are most likely to have been infected with viruses that cause STDs, okay? Also tapeworm and tuberculosis. It says the impact on Neanderthals was described as catastrophic by scientists behind the research. The diseases and infections would have spread through sexual contact between these early humans and the Neanderthals. A researcher from Cambridge University who studies modern infection said the result would have been a swift decimation of the native populations, as happened when Europeans arrived in the Americas in the 15th century. Researchers believe that many diseases traditionally thought to have been caught by humans from hurt animals were actually in the human population far earlier, and it was passed from the human population to the animals. Okay. 
So, um, some researchers have discovered that 20% of the Neanderthal genome can be found in humans today. Um, no one has all 20%, but it's spread across um, various Northern European populations. It says some Neanderthal gene variants may predispose Europeans to a collection of diseases and behaviors, such as lupus disease, Crohn's disease, diabetes, and depression. Lupus disease is an autoimmune disease where the body's immune system attacks healthy cells. Crohn's disease is bowel inflammation. One scientist says, when you look at how much Neanderthal DNA exists around the world, it's clear they made a small but significant contribution to a pool of genes that influence disease. The Neanderthal DNA is also a guide to what makes um, the European, the Northern European species unique. Science, scientists can identify genes that only their species have developed. In another study, a scholar detailed the diseases these Northern Europeans had, and it ranged from skin cancer to gonorrhea to syphilis to herpes to psoriasis, dermatitis, Lyme disease, bone and muscular disorders, ringworm, eczema, liver disease, and more. It says, STDs in animals and humans have a historical relationship and that two or three of the major STDs have come from animals. It says that we know, for example, that gonorrhea came from cattle to humans. Syphilis also came from cattle or sheep many centuries ago, and they say possibly sexually. In England, under the reign of Henry VIII, they introduced the first legislation against sodomy and bestiality with the Buggery Act of 1533. And they made buggery punishable by hanging, yeah, capital punishment. And that penalty was not lifted until the act was repealed in 1861. Okay, the Buggery Act 1533 defined buggery as an unnatural sexual act and it was defined by the courts to include anal penetration and bestiality. So that's just a um, brief summary concerning the um, relationship between the early humans who migrated from the African con continent into Northern Europe, the Scandinavian stroke German um, region, what they call Germanic people, who they later went on to call, um, you know, Goths, they went on to call them um, um, Vandals, and later on they called them um, the Vikings. And these are people who have um, left the territories and gone on conquests to conquer other lands. And they did this in um, England around the 6th, 7th, 8th century. So the Vikings invaded England um, to conquer England. Um, it was Anglo-Saxons, Celtic people, who were living in uh, what we now call England around the um, 6th, 7th century before the Vikings came. And you know that the Vikings came to raid um, and loot. You know, there was uh, rape and pillage and murder. And then they took over the, the land. Okay, so the Vikings were known for um, conquests, and they were known for um, brutality, um, savagery, and only in 1066 did, did um, that was his name, William the Conqueror, um, come on his conquest to conquer Britain. But these um, early um, humans, who had migrated from the African continent were living in Europe at the time of the Ice Age. The Ice Age lasted for tens of thousands of years until the ice melted. And then they were able to um, travel um, because the ice sheets had actually mel melted. So this is just a brief summary in regards to um, the early humans and their interaction and their interbreeding with the Neanderthals and that a lot of the um, genes, up to 20% of the genes, the DNA of the Neanderthals exists amongst the Northern 
European population to this day, and most of the Northern Europeans individually, from the research, carries between 2 and 5% Neanderthal DNA. So, if you didn't know this information, now you know. Now you know. Thank you for watching. Please share and subscribe. More videos coming soon.